I'm Ariel, and you're tuning in to Sound Therapy Arts TV. We are here with Joyelle Brandt. Hello. Round of applause. Solo. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good to have you. Thank you for coming in and performing and everything like that. Um, tell us a little bit about how you would describe yourself as an artist. Well, I describe myself as a combination between James Taylor and Annie Lennox. Yeah, those are two of Love my greatest Annie songwriting Lennox. heroes. Yeah. Awesome. So when you're in that songwriting process, what kind of things are you uh, trying to get in there? You know, my songwriting is my greatest therapy. So whenever I'm working on a new song, it's just something that I just need to get up and out of my system so that I can process it. So I find, um, you know, whether I'm journal writing or songwriting or doing art, any creative process for me is the best way for me to work through whatever's coming up for me. Nice. Were there any pivotal moments in your life where it was really important to have your music, to produce music? Uh, everything my whole life. The songs that I'm working on right now, I'm working on a collection called Family Life, and it's uh, all the songs about, you know, since I became a mom eight years ago, and I think that's a really important thing to talk about because in mainstream music, you really hear about the, everything that leads up to people getting together, and after that, there's kind of this mysterious void, and so um, that's where I'm at right now. Yeah, the journey, the struggle kind of gets left out, right? It's just the yeah, romance of it all. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, other than your music, or I'm sure it, it's all encompassing, you have a few projects that you're working on. Do you want to tell us a little bit about those? I do. The first project is called the Love Your Body Summit, and awesome. that's happening in February 6th next year during Eating Disorders Awareness Week. Nice. And that's a full day conference for women and girls to come and be empowered to have better self esteem, better body image. Mm -hmm. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit about your journey with body positivity? And um, you said it, it's, it's happening at a really important time, Eating Disorders Week. So, what's your story? Yeah. What, what kind of motivates you to put on this um, amazing event? I struggled with body image my whole life. I, I hit puberty very early and my body transformed very rapidly and it got a lot of unwanted attention. And so I developed a really negative relationship with my body because I associated the unwanted attention with my body changing. And I spent a lot of my life struggling with weight and whether I was heavy or skinnier, I was still constantly thinking about it in the back of my head about making sure you know, I was weighing in and checking in. And then I had kids and of course the instant conversation that comes up is, you know, when are you going to lose the baby weight? Yeah. And after my second child, I was still in that frame of mind, but I went through a really hard postpartum depression and at the end of that I just realized that I was tired of wasting my time beating myself up. And I really wanted to develop a positive relationship with my body and learn to listen to it and get to a place where I wasn't judging it all the time and be more free and yeah. joyful inside of it. That's awesome. Was there a moment where you felt um, maybe more positive about your body where you thought, okay, I am in this body and I love this body. And was there a moment where you really knew that you had achieved kind of that kind of frame of mind? I had, yeah, I had a morning where I looked in the mirror and I was like, damn girl, you're looking hot today. <laughs> That's awesome. And that was such a change for me from the internal monologue that had been there before. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. And do you put a lot of um, body positivity messaging in your songs? Do you find that that comes out? Absolutely. The song that I sang today, Take Me As I Am, is, is all about that. Just getting to a point in my life where I am, I am who I am and I'm okay with that and I love myself as I am. So anybody else who's going to be in my life you has gotta, to be on that page with me. The full package. Yeah. Everything. You got yeah. It. yeah. That's awesome. And so being a mother um, in this kind of like society where there's so much negative body image um, kind of propaganda, I would say. Mm -hmm. How do you think that um, you can communicate body positivity to younger generations or your children or um, younger people that you might influence in your life? What's Number your one thing is watch your words. Mm, Be yeah. so careful because we let little things slip out. Oh, I'm getting so fat or oh, I've got a... There's so many little moments when we are talking about ourselves or others where we're using judgmental body image language and that's the most hurtful thing because you can tell your daughter that she's beautiful but if she looks at you and sees you hating on yourself, that's what she's really it learning. It affects her, yeah. 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 I totally get that because I have a younger sister. She's about eight and she says things about tummies and being 
having flat tummies. Right. And so it can be really hurtful. Like the fat shaming, when it starts so young, it's kind of, it's pretty disturbing. You think that yeah. they have a lot of time before they worry about that stuff, you know? And it's hitting yeah. girls younger and younger because of the media intensity now. So right. absolutely, you're seeing girls' self-esteem actually peak at age nine and then start to plummet afterwards. And that's a really scary thing to think about. Yeah. 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 So what you're doing is just really revolutionary, you know, loving your body and things like that. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for your work. Um, you have another project that you're working on, the Trigger Points project you were telling me about. Yes, and the Trigger Points anthology is a collection of essays by parents who are survivors of childhood abuse. And that's also really tied into my work, which is all about opening up those ugly, dark places inside of yourself and, and letting the light in. And a lot of parents who had really traumatic childhoods have a hard time when they become parents themselves because they don't have that, that positive role model. They don't mm -hmm. have good memories of their childhood. And they have a lot of triggers that come up from them, a lot of flashbacks of their own childhood abuse as they're raising their own kids. Right. So what are um, the things that you really push to stop the cycle of abuse? Because, I mean, it is a cycle, right? Absolutely, yeah. it's a cycle. And self-awareness is key. You really have to start honoring uh, where you are at in the recovery process and be more self-aware about what, what are the moments when I am being triggered. Because a lot of times you're just so caught up in the emotion that you don't stop to think, oh wait, here I am, I'm, I'm stuck in this pattern again. Um, there's a beautiful concept called samskara, which is same scars, and it's those channels in your brain that are riveted in over time. And it takes that moment of awareness that you're in the pattern before you can step out of it. And so that's what this book is all about. It's wow. about recognizing those moments when you're caught in the pattern and taking a step back and saying, oh, okay, that's not what I want for my kids. Right. Yeah. Do you have a favorite piece in that anthology that you want to talk a little bit more about? Um, yes. Jody Ortega wrote a beautiful poem called Thank You. Um, and that's the, going to be the final piece in the anthology. And it's all about how she sees her son as her just greatest life's work and how much he has changed her and taught her about love. And it's just, I oh, love it so much. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. So... What does that feel like to put really vulnerable stuff into your music? Do you ever feel like, ah, I want to hide. Why am I letting people in so much? Ironically, I find it easier to do that stuff in my music than I do when I'm, say, hitting publish on an article that I'm publishing right. or getting up to speak about my personal history. I find music, it's kind of like a safe place, and you can pretty much say anything in a song, and somehow for me, it's, it's always felt safer, which is probably why I've been writing songs since I was four years old. Yeah, that's awesome. Are your kids music makers? Absolutely, yeah. yes. What kind of things are they uh, dabbling in these days? My eight-year-old really wants to study the drums. That's awesome. And my three-year-old has already memorized just dozens of song lyrics, so I'm pretty sure he's <laughs> going to be a singer. So I'm pretty stoked about having a little family band one day. That's awesome. And how does the positivity or body positivity training go with boys? I mean, I think it's a little different, but it's still important. I think for me it was inspired by my boys because I really saw in them exactly what life can be like when you don't have all these hang-ups. For other people who are raising boys who are a little bit older than mine, where it is starting to hit, um, you know, body positivity is important for women and men. Oh, yeah, for sure. So I'm seeing boys now are, are starting to be affected as well. Definitely. Yeah. And then I think the way that young men reinforce those um, beauty ideals for women, too, I mean, that's very heteronormative, but when we're just talking about just basically in society, um, mm -hmm. me young men have a huge role as well, right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. And I think it's important for the women in their lives to have a positive body image because that's, it's a reflection. We're mirrors of each other, right? Definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for all the work you do. We're so thrilled to have you and have amazing role models like you. Thank, thank you so you. much, Joyelle. Thanks for having me. <laughs>